previously on the Word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Telecast. Over the years and on more than one occasion, though some of you that are in leadership have been used by God to minister this word as well. I'm not talking to the copycats. I'm not talking to the Facebook celebrities who came in ministry once they click join on Facebook. I'm talking to those that the Holy Ghost has called, chosen, and set over a work. <laughs> That's what I'm talking to. Though you have been used by God to handle this scripture on more than one occasion, let's walk together in it now. And see, the thing is, it don't matter who's watching. You know, people try to copy you when they see God use you, but I'm not worried about that. They say that uh, imitation is flattery or something like that, but I'm not even paying no attention to that. Because one thing that you, brother and sister minister, must realize is that no one can copy you. They can try, but it won't work. They can talk like you, but it won't work. They can pray like you, but it won't work. They can sing like you, but it won't work. They can try to preach like you, but it won't work. They can do every gesture you do. If you do like this, they can do it too, mm, but it won't work. If you go this way, they can go that way, but it won't work. Because the best you is you. Verse 17, and one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Write that down, because remember, we're dealing with demonology in this chapter, okay? He said, his son hath a dumb spirit. Dumb meaning he couldn't speak, okay? And wheresoever, verse 18, he taketh him, meaning that spirit, he teareth him. That means he throws him all over the place or dasheth him. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answereth him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, meaning that man, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. <laughs> Let's go to verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do, he shall, excuse me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Some people think that means you're going to do better work and more work than Jesus by the word greater. Get out of the English, go into the Greek. It don't mean that you'll do greater by quality. It means that instead of him doing it alone, many of us that believe us on him, he said, verse 12, very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And many more of you will be doing what he do, if you believe on him, his word, him. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. In the Greek, in the beginning was theos, the logos was theos. He was with him from the beginning. Everything that was made, he made. If you believe on him, then what he does, you'll do also. The third heaven is where God lives and his angels and where Hebrews talks about us entering into his rest. That's where the departed saints are. Not looking down, not walking around heaven right now. Not fellowshipping with God. They have not received their reward, but they are resting before God. They labored here on earth, and when they left saved, they're resting.
now let's tune into our broadcast and see what the God of heaven has to say unto us. the word of God through Jesus Christ street and outreach ministry raw and uncut productions Uh, perfect time for the word and watch this don't get caught up in the theatrics but get caught up in the word god bless you my name is apostle alan e coleman jr the lord has assigned me as apostle teacher and prophet of the word of god through jesus christ street and outreach ministry thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's gonna do. I don't even know if he's gonna have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're gonna find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850-24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others, just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have. That you are in my life. All that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how was my life to be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Verse 10, again, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Verse 11, and he gave some. Now, here's what he gave, the gifts. He gave some apostles, semicolon, and some, comma, prophets. If you're a woman and you're in the prophetic office, you are a prophetess. You're not a prophet 
because God is so so wise and so intelligent being that he made all languages if you look in the Greek and the Hebrew actually let's go to Hebrew prophetess is Nebiah which means an inspired woman a poetess so that way you don't have to be confused and prophet is nor be which is an inspired male so in those in that office the prophetic office that's for both genders nor be and Nebiah stop calling women prophets because that's outside of scripture. You don't believe it. The book of Judges, let's notice. Chapter 4. And let's notice verse 1. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the land of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera was dwelt in Harasheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had nine chariots of iron. And twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. Verse 4, and Deborah a prophetess. The wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. That was the ministry God used her over. To judge or govern a nation. If people wanted to know if God said this or that, they went to Deborah. She judged Israel. So yes, a woman can be over ministry and it don't mean pastor. If you're a prophetess and God set you over the ministry, stay that. If you're an evangelist, sister, and God set you over ministry, stay that. If you're a teacher like Priscilla, sister, and God set you over ministry, stay that. Because these three offices are biblically sound for sisters. I don't want to get too far off. And he gave some apostles and some comma prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Where's archbishop in there? It's not. Where's chaplain? It's not. Where's the guardian of the four corners of the earth? It's not. Where's the general? It's not. That's the five-fold ministry counted. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That's five. Other than that, God didn't do it. So now, uh, sometimes that's one of the problems that's harming the ministry is that you're adding stuff that God didn't put in there. And you wonder why gay people can come in and sit down and chill. You wonder why the minds, which is borderline demoniacal, yes, borderline de 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 demoniacal, look at the makeup. Okay, oh, but no, God told me to worship dance, then worship dance. God told me to praise dance, then praise dance. It don't got nothing to do with makeup because God is looking at your heart, not your face. So you want to uh, impress upon people that you are trying to look as a pneumatic host being or a spiritual being? No. Because through that, Satan has brought pop locking, moon walking, break dancing, and everything else, and some pole stripping in the ministry. You don't want to hear that. Some of the sisters, look at them. Praise dancing or worship dancing. And wearing outfits that project everything. There's some men that can't wait to see them sisters dance. Why? Because they're looking at what they can see. Tight fitting form. No. No. Mm -mm. Four classes of demons. 
principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, out of those four demons, here's what we're going to talk about. But first, remember Ephesians 4 and 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. That means the maturing of the saints. A lot of people say we're not perfect. No, no, the perfect you talking about means flawless. And God already knows that. That's why he said there's none righteous, no, not one. But the perfecting of the saints means the spiritual maturing of the saints. Your prayer life should be mature. Your walk should be mature. Your character should be mature. Your conversation should be mature. The fivefold ministry is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Ministry here means service in the Greek. Brother, sister, minister, he put your gift in the body for the work of the ministry. I, I know a few ministers say we need to work the word, but that's witchcraft. No, you don't manipulate or work the word. You can't do that. Hocus pocus, alakazam, I throw this word on you and that is what you am. No, man. No. You don't work the word. You apply the word and let the word do what it do. For the work of the ministry, and then it says, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Edifying here is like the building up of a building. You should be built up in Christ. A lot of the people in the buildings look like those in the world. If you're going in the buildings with all of your tattoos showing in the place of worship, you need to stop. Because if anyone that sees and look at you, the first thing they're going to say is you can't be saved. Why? Because you branded yourself. Your tattoo is a brand. And God said in the Old Testament, don't do that. And your broken down minister, who's probably tattooed also, won't tell you how wrong it is. Four classes of demons. You might say, well, the principalities that are the chief. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's, let's get into them. Well, no, they're right under Satan. They're not the ones that govern stuff. What they do is they get the work orders. They get the orders from Satan. The powers, they execute the program that Satan will execute it. Rulers of the darkness of this world, those are the workhorses. And the wicked spirits are like the privates that take the orders to the field of battle. They go out and actually carry out the agenda of hell. Demons are not its or things. So when you see a lying spirit, don't say look at it. No, look at him. And demons don't have gender. They have personhood though. They have emotions, intellect, and will. They will take you captive at their will. And there's nothing you can do about it if you're not saved. So demons have personhood. That's why Jesus said in Mark 9, if you notice verse, let's go back to verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. That's good that they left the disciples and that whole scenario, and they ran to Jesus and saluted him. That's how it should be. Every minister should point you to Jesus. There should not be no minister taking claim for themselves. Jake's 
Dollar, Meyer, all of them, Osteen, they're filthy rich. You can't even call them. They're making merchandise of you and of you. You can't even call them. You can't call them and ask for prayer. You can't even reach them. The moment you call those ministries, the first thing they're talking about is give. And when you do so into like the Jordans, what do they do? Then they call you and hound you to give more. The Lord used me to put out their fundraisers we're doing to help people. I said, Lord, are your people going to do this? And God said, put the fundraiser out there because I have people who will sow into it to be a blessing to others. Apostle don't get no, there's no salary. salaries coming from what people share. So when the devil is telling some people, no, nah, I don't sow, you ain't got to sow. Look at the fundraiser and click like. It's good that you like it. Show how much you like it by sowing into it. Help us out. You... Don't you know, if you sow into the ministry, those that God used us to help, God will reward you too. He'll reward you too. But if he's blessed you to have substance, whether it's old Bibles, old clothing, whatever, finance, whatever it is, and you hear that voice, so, and God is not going to holler, he'll whisper it, so share, pour into Cash your bread upon the waters. But the enemy will say, no, don't do it. Look at that. Don't do it. They ain't got no big giant building. Don't do it. They got a green thing up in the back instead of a banner. Don't do it. <laughs> but you're not stopping God. Because look at this. The ministry you pay don't even share stuff like this with you. You could come in there after being in the club all night and that broken down pastor will say, <laughs> Oh, it's all right. God knows your heart. You can leave Bible study and go play a number, and the pastor can find out and say, Oh, it's okay. Uh, uh, with prayer, you'll change. He don't want to offend you because if you leave, the so with that money that you're sharing. And then you got the sisters that are not married, that are in ministry, that all of the women in the ministry follow her and want to be like her. You want to be single too? You want to be the type of woman that a man look at and don't want you? So I was led to just pay attention. Because I'm a man of substance. God has made me responsible over a work. I can't just have anybody. I can't have no wife that don't want to minister, that's not ministry minded, that can't be reached by the phone, that want to argue, fuss, fight, and embarrass her husband and all that. I don't want nobody like that. Why? Because sisters are looking at her. So that season passed. And I got married to someone else that the Lord blessed me to meet on Facebook. And God blessed us so much that before she got here, I told her, God said, we're going to have a daughter. Before I even saw her. And that's what we have right now. And this woman has a thing called prophetic connections. And she is claiming to be following God and a bit more following God as Judas was. Because if she heard God tell people stuff, then wouldn't she first hear him say, connect that daughter with her father? So now I have a daughter that when she get older, like a few other children I had when I wasn't saved, that mothers kept them from me, that said to me later when they got older, I don't believe my mother kept you from me. Well, I got three that I raised that love me with all their heart and respect me, and they're in the ministry. So my record speaks for itself. The only ones that have a problem with me of my children are those that's not saved whose mothers are not saved, who wasn't brought up saved, who only know that prayer is a word and not an action thing. And now I got to deal with a little six-year-old daughter of mine that I love dearly. I got to hear her tell me one day, you wasn't there for me. Now see, I got a trick for that one. 
because every writing that her mother wrote me saying, if I have the baby and the baby live, I'm not going to let you see the baby. I have nothing to do with the baby. I got all of that saved on my computer. I got the pictures of when we were married saved in a box and sealed. I got the pregnancy test. I got everything to show my daughter, look, it was real. See, God want to bless a lot of you sisters, but you're not asking God to prepare you for marriage. You think we went off course? No, we didn't. We're still on it. Four classes of demons. The one we're dealing with is the cosmocrator, the world ruler. Rulers of the darkness of this world. Because that demon is a territorial demon. That's the demon that's sitting over your life. That's sitting over your family. That's sitting over your generation. That sat over the generations before you. That sat over your mother, your grandmother, your great-grandmother, your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather. That's the demon that's assigned to your family by Satan to make sure you don't be nothing. Hmm. Catch this revelation. You got, I pray you don't get mad, but if your toes hurt, just say ouch and be all right. That's the demon that, that you wonder why you're a lesbian because somebody before you and your family was. You wonder why you're a homosexual male is because somebody before you was. You, most of y'all that are homosexual was molested by the same sex in the family. Why? Because of that territorial demon that sat over your family. Well, was that the demon of homosexuality? No. That was a foul spirit who has demons lesser than him working under him to carry out foulness in your life. Crooked pastors, because somebody in your family was a crooked pastor. You got in ministry chasing money because somebody in your family drove the big car. And you said, no, I don't want to be like the pimp. I want to be like him. My, my father or my grandfather, my great-grandfather, that wears the collar. Come on now. Territorial demon. Anger all in you because you was raised by somebody angry. Territorial demon. You can't get free because of that demon that is over your life. You're a drunk, an alcoholic, because your mother or your father was one. The same way you saw them act is how you act. Territorial demon. You battling with crack, heroin, marijuana, weed. I don't care if it's piff, if or sif. It don't matter. You're, you're, you're battling with that because someone in your family was battling with that. And some of you have, I had a father who was an alcoholic, but when I was in the world and unsaved, my drug of choice was weed. I used to smoke a half ounce a day and was selling weight. Yes, God delivered me from something. See? There's a territorial demon, a foul spirit over my father's side of the family. Both sides have foul spirits because then on my mother's side, I got religious relatives who will mention Jesus. But when you look at some of their ways, you can't see them. I got to tell the truth. That's another thing. How can you be free except you tell the truth? Be free. You're not going to be free as long as you think that your family all belong in the pulpit. No. No. Because there's some people groomed for ministry by the religious relative. This is how you talk. Listen, son. Little son. Little grandson. This is how you walk. And then tell the wife, now you got to act like this because he's great. 
And so her with no anointing is in the place of being first lady and being groomed. And then the ministry where, where people have come, not always because God sent them, but sometimes relatives bring them. Or friends, or they make friends, or some ignorant folk that see them with a collar go, you must know Jesus. No. Mm -mm. Oh, I was like that. Before God put me in ministry, the Lord sent me around to some ministries to go and talk to some pastors. One pastor who's deceased now said unto me, I saw an ashtray on his, kid, on his living room table. I said, dude, is it all right to smoke? He said, oh, Jesus' disciples smoke. They used to roll cigarettes. Demons. Doctrines of devils. God wants you to break free from that. He, he does. Because he can't move if you don't. When he walked up in Mark 9, verse 14, when he came to his disciples and saw a great multitude about them, don't think that this was by accident. Don't think he just happened to be in a neighborhood. This was predestined, partly so we can read it and draw from this a few things, one of them being a lesson on demonology and how you get rid of demons. In verse 16, he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. My son is unable to talk. I know you gave him a mouth to talk with, but there's something stronger than him that's prohibiting him from talking. A dumb spirit. And wheresoever he, that spirit, not it, but he, that spirit, taketh him, my son, he teareth him. He throw him all over the place. And my son foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away, meaning he lays there like he's dead. He's withering. He's, he's just drained, exhausted, can't move. The man said, and I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. There's a lot of ministers. People that call themselves apostles. And listen, when it, when it rains, I don't own an umbrella. So when it rains, the Lord leave me to pray against the rain and it stops. My family know this. Certain ones of my family. My children that I raised in the ministry, they know. Is it me? No, it's God. But when you are walking with him and he's placed you in ministry and you're sold out for Jesus Christ. And you are a consecrated vessel. He said, if you believe on me, greater works than these. What I do, you're going to do also. I can't do what Jesus did, no, but he anointed me to pray against the rain, to stop it. Some ministers have no power. They go to the hospital and pray for somebody, and they die anyway. No power. You go up every, watch this. Every week you're going up there in the prayer line for a specific prayer request and nothing's happening. It's not working. You're not changing. You're still being tormented. You're still being stressed out. You're still being aggravated. You're still and have no peace. You still can't sleep at night. You still can't put the crack pipe down. You still can't keep that needle out of your arm. You still smoking a cigarette or lighting a spliff or a blunt or a J. You don't know how to put it down and you receive prayer supposedly and nothing has happened. No power. And the devil don't even fear them because he know they have no power. The man said, I spake to thy disciples that they should cast them out. They could not. He answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Now, people say, oh, the Lord would never tell you. He'll, he's long-suffering. Yes, he is. But there come a point where Jesus said, you ain't got it yet. 
You've been on a praise and worship team for three months and you still in the club on Saturday? You've been delivered from sleeping with all these women and still you doing it again, brother? Sister, you done got a bad name already. They calling you the H word and everything else from your past. And now here you is coming into church, sleeping around. The Lord says, oh, faithless generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Then he just said, bring him to me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, the man, when that man saw Jesus, straightway, I mean right away, the spirit that was in him tore him up, threw him all over the place, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. Now here's the part that I, I find very funny. I said this before, I said it again. I can imagine this, watching all of this go on. And Jesus just standing there looking. And then look at the father and say, how long is it ago since this came unto him? How long have you been going through this? Which Jesus knew because he know everything. But again, take this lesson because this is for you and I to read and gather information from. How long is it ago that since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And then the man gives a report, a natural report, excuse me. And oft times they have cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, how compassionate on us and help us. This man had a legitimate request. He gave the natural report of what he saw. Now, there's a lot of people, I know some people got diabetes and say, the doctor said, I got it, but I don't claim that. By his stripes, I'm healed. Who stripes? And if you heal, did the test say gone? No? Well, you need to pay attention to the natural report so you'll know what to pray for. If you say you're delivered from something, you don't want to do it no more. There's no sign of it. You say you're delivered from being angry, then you should be the most pleasantest person in the world. But if you're not, you're not delivered. The only one you're fooling is yourself. Because everybody around you on the outside of your trial can see your character. And they're talking about you. They see you playing numbers. They see you smoking. I remember years ago on CTV in New Haven, uh, the Lord was using me to do a live broadcast, and I opened up the lines so people could call for prayer, and a sister called in and said, aren't you the man that I see on Orchard Street with a cigarette in your mouth? The director was quiet. The camera people were quiet. For a minute, I was quiet. I didn't know how to respond. I wanted to go off because I was busted. But the Holy Ghost said, no, just, just open your mouth. And I opened my mouth, and here's what he told me to say. That probably was me because at the time I was smoking cigarettes. That probably was me. But don't blame God for my shenanigans or for what I do wrong. That shows you that Brother Coleman, see now I, was, I didn't say apostle, even though I, I am an apostle and I was then. But sometimes we got to be humble. And I said, that shows my frailty, Brother Coleman. See, the apostle don't need uh, deliverance because he's delivered. God placed him. But the old man always want to come and make a cameo sometimes. Paul said in Romans 7, that which I want to do is not what I do, and that which I don't want to do is what I do. So your old man will always make a cameo and battle with your new nature while your soul is standing there watching the old man fight the new man. And you sitting there looking at this. One minute you're living right, the next minute you're stumbling and falling. And if you're godly sorry, you'll say, oh, I'm tired of doing this. But if you're not godly sorry and you have no conscience, then you won't even see your error. You won't see how wrong you are. This man gave a natural report of what his son was going through. And he said, if you can do 
anything. He didn't say, oh, whatever my son going through, that's on him. Some parents, your children, some have become gay. Some of your children follow other gods. Some become Muslim. Some become 5% is thinking they're God. Some doing whatever they want to do. And all you saying as a parent is, I support my child and I love them. They can do, go ahead, you just do what you want to do. And then you got the religious ones. Well, you know you got to follow the Lord and that's it. But yet and still you support everything else they do. No, no. This father said, if you can do anything, I'm tired of my son going through this. If you can do anything, have compassion on us, us, because I'm going through it with him. And save us or help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, if you believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Look at how he answered. The, question, the answer was, if thou canst believe. Then he said, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Now he's admitting there's a level of faith he don't have. There's a level of belief he does not have. You say you believe God. When, you know how God stopped me from smoking years ago? Here's what he said. I just bought, I had three pack of Newports, right? I was getting a light a cigarette. I was at my cousin, uh, the evangelist house, evangelist Erica. I was at her house. I was sitting on the couch, and I was getting a light a cigarette. And the Lord, out of, the, out of nowhere, the Holy Ghost, he said to me, do you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord. And he said, then why are you smoking? And I said, oh. <laughs> See, there was conviction. Because I had a connection with him. Being in ministry and all. Some not in ministry, but you still have a connection with him. He said, why are you smoking? And he didn't say no more after that about that because the, that one word tore me up. And this prayer box up here, I put, I bought, this is an old, old prayer box. I've had this for maybe 20 some years, but it's been less than that that I was smoking. But I bought up the cigarettes and broke them up and put them right in that prayer box. And one thing about the prayer box, if you put your hand in the prayer box, that's like putting your hands in the Ark of the Covenant. You will get dealt with. Once you put something in the prayer box, you don't go in there and read it. You don't, if somebody else puts something in there, you don't take it out. Who is you? You ain't got no power. You don't do nothing. The prayer box, that's God's mailbox. You want, uh, you want God to handle an issue? Put a prayer box together in your house. I'm going to do a YouTube video on how to make a prayer box. Put one in your house and put something in the prayer box and watch God work it out. This man said, help thy my unbelief. Now, verse 25, when Jesus saw that the people came running together. Now, now watch what Jesus did. While him and this man was having dialogue and his son was going through and everybody came running. When Jesus allowed all these people to come, that's when he moved. Sometimes God is going to move after you done prayed and fasted and prayed and fasted. You said, why hasn't he moved yet? Because the right people haven't showed up. See, God wants those people to show up that he can prove he's God in your life and with you. That wife who's been faithful to that wayward husband, God haven't heard, answered you. He's heard you. He haven't answered it in your time because God want this husband to see that God is with you. How? It might be by the way you are dealing with this mess. And that man, according to 1 Peter chapter 3, Scripture says this. 1 Peter, let me see, Hebrew, James, 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 1, Scripture says this. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. So the way you carry yourself will make them straighten up. 
And you brothers, it's the same way. You got that crazy wife or that wife that stress you, that don't support nothing you're doing, and, and she don't appreciate you and all of that. She tell everybody why she around them. Well, I got a good husband because she don't want the boss to have you. But yet and still, in secret, she just putting you all through all kind of demonic stuff. The Lord said don't argue with her. Just shrug it off. Let her do her. And you stay focused on the Lord. And after a while, what will happen is she'll come to her senses and realize, I'm messing up. Because if a, if, a, if a woman is not treating her husband right and she got a man of God as a good husband, don't think other sisters ain't looking. Same thing with a brother. You got a woman of God, a wife that's a woman of God, and you ain't treating her right. You ain't going to service with her. You ain't, you ain't walking with her. You ain't praying with her. You ain't having a Bible study. Don't think another brother not looking going, man, it's always the bad guys that get the good girls. Because that's how it goes. Jesus let... When, when Jesus saw, verse 25, that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. See, the foul spirit, that, that ruling demon that sat over that boy's life, that man's son's life. He rebuked him, the foul spirit, saying unto him, thou, meaning you, deaf and dumb spirit. So he talked about these two spirits. The father saw one. He said, my son got a dumb spirit. But Jesus said, you dumb and deaf spirit. First, he rebuked me and corrected the foul spirit. So Jesus went to the, you got to catch this. He went to the root. First, he rebuked the, the territorial demon. And then he called out the lesser demons, the work demons by name you dumb and deaf spirit I charge thee come out of him and enter no more into him and the spirit cried not the boy the spirit ah and rent him sore and came out of him when you start praying for stuff sometimes that's when it get worse that demon threw that boy around one last time and then got out of him and he was as one dead, in so much that many said, wow, he's dead, because he just laid there. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, when Jesus came in the house after this, and the, 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 the man's son was fine, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind the territorial demon, this kind, not the deaf and dumb spirit, no, not, not that one, but that foul spirit, this kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Before you all get rid of the cigarettes, you have to get rid of the spirit of addiction. Before you get rid of or can be free from homosexuality, you have to be free from that perverted spirit that has been sitting over your family for a long time because that demon runs through some families where every man is gay and every woman is a lesbian. I don't trust no lesbian spirit. I'm sorry. If you tell me you've been delivered, I got to see fruit because I don't believe it. I know it can happen. I know a man can be delivered from being a gay male and I know a woman could be delivered from being a lesbian. I know this, but do you know it? Because when you're delivered, there's no proof. Now I got to tell you something I don't want to say. I used to be a womanizer when I was in the world. I loved women. And until I realized that, I couldn't be delivered. And for the record, all of us don't say, ooh, apostle. Listen, let me tell you something. All of us apostles were womanizers before we came in the Lord. Any true apostle, he, not she, because there are no women apostles in the Bible. Any true apostle is going to tell you the truth. And it's not always a bad thing because a man is supposed to desire a woman. But when you're in the world, you look for a one, at a woman one way. But when you're a man of God, you look another way. Like right now, I wouldn't dare be, I wasn't attracted to no unsaved woman. No woman showing everything. And I saw one woman uh, back in 2012, and I said, wow, you know, she would make a good wife. And the moment she showed me her two tattoos, two hearts, I said, nope, not her. Because mm -mm. 
if God going to use me to teach against tattooing oneself, which he does, how is it going to look? He's using me to teach against that, and the woman bearing my last name is standing there all tattooed up. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. Nah. You got to be careful who you let in your life. Sisters, you two, that man that slapped you, get rid of him. No, I, I tell you what. Just walk away before you end up in the hospital broken up. Because if he slapped you once, he's going to do it again. Yeah, he's going to do it again. If he called you a B, he's going to do it again. If he's cheating on you left and right, he's going to do it again. Unless he realizes his error, he's not going to change. That's just how it goes. This man saw what his son went through and brought him to Jesus. And Jesus said, this kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Now, fasting is not, oh, I'm just going to stop eating. That's not fasting. No, fasting is when you deny your flesh so that your spirit man can connect with God. And when your spirit man connects with God, because you're denying yourself. Read Isaiah 58. That's the fasting chapter. And it tells you about fasting. It tells you what to do. Let me make sure it's Isaiah 58. Because you got Isaiah 53, which is the Messianic chapter, I believe. Isaiah 58, cry aloud, spare not. Yeah, that's the fasting chapter, Isaiah 58. Read that. And then it'll tell you what fasting is. And how to conduct yourself. And God made a promise in there what he'll do. Matthew chapter 12. And we're closing on this. In chapter 12. Remember how Jesus went to the root. He dealt with the foul spirit by rebuking him. And then he dealt with those lesser spirits. Uh, in Matthew chapter 12. If you notice verse 25. After Jesus had cast this other boy. This, other, this devil out of the other man. These devils. These Pharisees in them, they claim Jesus was possessed. It says in verse 22, Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. So in verse 25, it says in verse 24, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Bilzi, but the prince of the devils. Verse 25 says, And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. This is the foundation of anything spiritual. Jesus is trying to say it's, it's, a house divided against itself is not going to stand. I don't understand how Christian women marry Muslim men. Y'all serving two different gods. You serving the only true and living God. And Allah is nothing but a black stone in the Kaaba. A, a idol that don't speak, hear, see, talk, or nothing. Don't even supposedly deal with his creation, as the Muslims say. But you serve a God that do deal with you. How can you be married to somebody that served another God? It won't work. Verse 26, And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? He's not going to cast himself out. He can't. That's why you don't see a Muslim arguing with a Jehovah Witness. You don't see a Mormon arguing with a Jehovah Witness or a Catholic. Well, you don't see all those other religions. They don't bother each other, but you don't see them standing out there arguing. The only ones that they all come against are us that accept Jesus Christ. So Satan, all the religions he put together, they're not going to argue against each other because their goal is to get you away from Christ or stop you from finding him, and that's what they do. So in verse 27, Jesus said, And if I by Bilzy but cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. Because these Jews was casting out demons, supposedly, and their families believe it. You know, they remember the seven sons of Sceva and the, the, uh, um, they were itinerant Jews and casting out devils and stuff, supposedly. But verse 28, Jesus said, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. That means God's kingdom is present with you because all of that was in Jesus. He was a representative. Verse 29, or else how, now here's what you got to catch. We're going to close with this. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. 
He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathers not with me scattereth abroad. Uh, let, let me go further. Something else the Lord wants you to see. If we jump down to verse, uh, oh God, Dodger generation, verse 43. When an unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished, meaning when you are delivered. That demon comes back and see that you didn't change your life, you changed your friends, you didn't change your desires. I mean, God didn't cleaned you up and straightened you up. You are right now. You're just not Holy Ghost filled, but you just saved. And then that demon, when he sees that the Holy Ghost, he's not living in you, and that that place called your spirit, which is like a room that is still open and vacant, what happened is he findeth the empty, swept, and garnished, then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. Now this spirit is a territorial demon that comes back to where he said, his house, where I just came from. So that was his territory. He came back, saw that you changed, the person changed, but there's, the Lord is not living there. Then he go get seven other spirits worse than himself. These are the workers. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Whew. That took a lot. I hope you got something. For those that I see on you Facebook Live, it's look like some freezing going on. But that's all right because tonight I'm going to air it. I'm going to put it on YouTube and put it on Facebook so you'll see the video. It's going to be in part one and two, though, because I'm going to air it for television. It's going to be a two-part episode. Call the ministry for prayer, 475-300-3850. If you call now, you're going to get the voicemail because for on Facebook, this is live. So obviously I'm not on the phone and I won't stop to go answer the phone. And if you're watching on television or YouTube uh, or at a later date uh, after December 2nd, then you call, I'm going to answer the phone, okay? And I'll sit with you and pray with you. Answer any question you have about this lesson. If you want a free copy of it, look in the description. It, there's a way you can get a free copy of it in its entirety where it's all, you know, the whole thing and not broken up. And, uh, it's not broken in twos, but it's the whole thing. The only thing that we ask is a, a donation for shipping and handling. And that's also on the link when you click on it. We also ask that you sow into the ministry. We're trying to do care packages for the winter. People, women that are out there sleeping on benches, they need napkins. They need sanitary stuff. Look in the description here and you'll see where it says, you know, to make a donation from your heart. Do that so God can use the ministry to get these care packages for some people that are sleeping out there on benches. Okay? But God uses us to touch many people's lives and help people. You can reach this ministry. So, I mean... <laughs> You know, you'll be sowing into good ground. Just let God use you. And there's, we got a fundraiser on Facebook for women that are struggling, that have children but no husbands. They're going to need toys for Christmas. We don't celebrate as far as a tree and all of that stuff because we know D Jesus wasn't born on no December 25th. But we do celebrate this holiday season because it's a time for family. Food, family, and fellowship. And look in the description and you'll see the ministry's website that you can go on and uh, enjoy the videos there and uh, uh, the, uh, teaching resources. We have resources on any subject. We've been on television since 1996, okay? I've been in the office of Apostle, praise God, since 94. So we, you know, there's many subjects if you need some teaching DVDs and you see the teaching God used the ministry to do. This is how, this is what Bible study would be, which actually in person Bible study, we do question and answer. I covered the resources and said, if you have a question, ask it and we'll tackle it in the word of God. Bible study is not standing there preaching at you, but this right here was just a word that the Lord said to share with you for this day. You know, uh, and again, look forward to, uh, the closing words that God to do uh, toward the end of the year um, so that that way uh, 
he's going to give a prophetic word through the ministry and so forth. A friend of mine, Apostle Whitfield, you've seen some of his videos through this ministry because the Lord used this ministry to help him out and uh, to get established in certain ways. You know, we got to be there for one another. That's our way of sowing uh, is to help him uh, in the ministry to, to jumpstart the ministry. He just came back to New Haven. He's, he was on television before. He's already a public figure and a TV producer in New Haven. He's been there for many years. But now he's came, he came back after being gone for 19 years. And so uh, he come back in town, and the Lord used us to, to be a blessing to that ministry. It's called Rhema Faith World Outreach and Street Ministry. So look for that on YouTube. Uh, and, you know, just hold him up in prayer. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins and shortcomings of false and wrongs. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the fellowship. Thank you for the time spent. Thank you for my brethren and my sisters. Thank you for all this. Bless those that support the ministry, even after this little talk. Bless those that, that help with the phone bill. Bless, just bless those, Lord, that, that love you and that uh, we're in fellowship. We just ask that you bless each and every one. Let everybody sleep good tonight, have a good dream, and sleep all through the night, and wake them up tomorrow to see another day, to have another chance of life. We just thank you for everything. We love you. We ask that you keep us before you and restore unto me the virtue that I went out. Please, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you for hearing us and for answering us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Again, we love you. I like to say God bless you, and y'all have a good night, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And, uh, you know, write me in my inbox. Let me know. You know, if you got any questions, again, 475-300-3850. Those of you watching by television, that's the number, and the website is going to appear on the screen, uh, and you can get in touch with me, okay? And let the Lord uh, use you to sow into the ministry because we are doing the work that the Lord will have us to do. And we need a little help to be able to help others. Okay, open your hand, please. Just, just open your hand. It's not going to hurt you. You can share $5. You can share $10. You can share 50 It doesn't matter as a donation. Your donations are all tax deductible. If you itemize on your taxes, then we'll definitely give you a receipt confirming your donation so that that way you can use it uh, with the IRS or whatever, and your taxes, okay? We love you, and God bless you. Now I'm getting ready to end this, and I'm tired, okay? God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care. <laughs> Till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table. I'm glad, I'm glad I know someone. And it's
Satisfied.